Yeah, hello folks, I'm Stoke Steve, and welcome to Seven Days to Die. Anyone who's not familiar with it, it's sort of a Minecraft-esque zombie survival game. Uh, all the environments are completely destructible and rebuildable. The general idea is that every seven days, a horde of zombies comes and attacks you. It is currently day 245. The uh, red text indicates that it is a horde night. This is all the default map started out as uh, easy difficulty and every time like I have progressed and learned more about the game I've sort of increased it now I'm on insane difficulty uh, there's the main uh, base built into the side of a mountain out here I've got some farms some extra smelters and storage and a little uh, power station the base started out as a little hole in the wall it's just progressively gotten bigger and bigger Got myself right next to the trader. General idea with this base is that uh, since I'm built into the side of a mountain, uh, when the enemies start spawning, about half of them uh, start up on the hillside. If they ever step onto the slopes right here, they'll just uh, slide on down into this pit. Uh, once they get into the pit, they will try and pathfind up these stairs and across this little bridge which I don't have much problem getting over but they end up just sliding down it and getting into this nice little loop where they just keep going up and down and are easy shots uh, from here I got a big old line of junk turrets junk turrets unlike all the rest of the uh, automated defenses gives you a hundred percent of the exp uh, from each kill. I've got enough here to last me the entire uh, horde night without me actually having to fire a shot. I just have to periodically come and refill these about once a week. I uh, hold off whatever other enemies come by during that time. If I'm ever concerned that uh, maybe a leap or something can hop through here, I got, got a little... A little hatch to guard me. All the bars you can shoot through comfortably without uh, them taking damage. They'll only take damage from melee. And uh, up here I've got a uh, little, little lookout. If I want a better vantage point of everything. Can mess a little bit with the uh, zombie AI. They prefer to come at me from like the same uh, altitude as I'm at if I can. But uh and uh, down here, underneath, I've got a little section. So this room is uh, primarily... Because the junk turrets are sort of considered entities and not, uh, like, solid objects, uh, if you leave and come back into an area, if there's any sort of conflict between their hitboxes, they have a chance of falling through the ground. And, uh, yeah. They'll, they'll fall through normal blocks like this that I can place down, but they won't fall through just the normal ground. Unless there's absolutely nowhere like the game, like can figure out where to put them, I'm gonna have to go do it down to the lower level to pick them up. But yeah, uh, over here is just my nice little crafting area, all the various uh, smelters and chemist stations and construction stations. I prefer to use the uh, little drawers for storage. Uh, there was one instance like early on where one of the uh, Suicidal zombies uh, managed to burrow in through the wall and uh, get in here and uh, explode himself right in the middle of my uh, crafting area. I lost quite a bit of uh, my storage from that. So, this way, just in case something does get into this area, you know, if they do explode, they won't do too much damage to all of my important crafting stuff. And, of course, in the very back is my purely aesthetic room. Just a nice little, uh, nice little living room. Got some cooking area. Not that you need to use any of this stuff. It's just for looks. The uh, lighting up there is pretty much all that I have the uh, power station out there hooked up to. Just to make things look nice. A big old... TV. And upstairs we got a nice little bedroom. Nice soft lighting. 
I do have my gamma turned up fairly high so I can see in most lighting situations. Uh, yeah, if I put down like any more lights than this, it can become pretty blinding. Spend a good day just going around collecting all the aesthetic bits from traders for this. And here we go. The Horde Knight, I believe, starts at 22. Sorry, Wolfie. And that means Horde Knight is going to begin. Five, four, three, two, one. And there we go. Again, I, I don't actually have to shoot. Got to show you all what it's like. You can hear them rushing in from the hills above. And the uh, green zombies, if you don't know, those are irradiated. Which means they have a uh, bit of a healing factor to them. They're a bit tougher. Uh, that was a leaper zombie. Really the only thing that can get in here. gets a lucky shot at me but uh, they tend to path find like directly over my head so if I'm in this little corner they just hit the wall and slide down And aside from leapers, there's nothing that will really be able to hit me if I stand out here and get a nice little view of everything coming down the hill. They can't stand on top of each other's heads, I suppose. So. If there get to be enough zombies here, they might be able to stand up and take a swing at me. Ah, here's one of the suicide zombies. So these guys, I prefer to take out their legs first and go for the head. Because if you don't, uh, if you just shoot at their body, it'll uh, trigger their uh, self-detonation. Basically, the entire base is made out of steel at this point, so they don't do that much damage. But, you know, if I'm shooting shots the entire time and get a couple of uh, suicide guys blowing up in the same spot, it might you know, break this all down to concrete level. Originally, I had this bridge uh, sit down the center of the pit, but uh, since I've got it on the right hand side now, all the turrets will have a clear line of sight uh, on any enemies that uh, come and slide down below there. The only time they won't be able to hit, hit them is if they're like uh, right behind the bridge. And normally, if uh, 
the pit were aligned with uh, just like straight up and down blocks, the uh, zombies would try to break through them to get to me. But uh, because these are all slopes, they might occasionally like think this is a viable path and try to lock up it, but they won't actually attack the sides of it. Because the way the AI thinks is it, uh, it always tries to go through the path of least resistance. And if its uh, normal walking path is completely locked off, then it might uh, try to break through uh, a wall or something or break down supports uh, for the thing you're standing on to try to get to you. But uh, all this is more or less a viable path for them. So they'll just uh, keep them, keep walking up and around to try to get to me. But won't actually be able to do it. This fat guy is a cop zombie, so he will spit at me if I give him a chance. It's really the only ranged attack that zombies have. My turrets are starting to... It's, it's uh, only the far away turrets that are active. You can see, like, all the ones near me have run out of ammo. So I can only have uh, two turrets active at a time. I just leave uh, a little bit of inventory space. Reload and repair if necessary. I try to get them like right where their uh, little legs overlap. Don't want them too close, don't want them too far apart. And they really fit into the space without any problems. Once on the far left, I try and turn inwards a little bit so they have a better shot. Grab some more ammo. crowd over there. Stop and detonating.
out the legs. And with that, the Horde Night ends. A little bit of blind spot where uh, the tourist can't hit the zombies, but it's really not that big of an issue. Oh yeah, a little bit of damage to uh, the armored stairway. And this water underneath, if you're wondering, uh, I just use it as an infinite water source. Originally, I did want to like fill this all up with water, so that it would create a slowdown effect whenever a zombie got inside of it. But uh, that, that takes way too long. Fortunately, everything uh, on the outside here is like just outside of uh, anywhere the zombies would attack. Typically, zombies just go after the player, so everything here they'll just walk over and not damage. That was a typical horde night. Burned through a fair bit of ammo. I had to restock the turrets a little bit. Yeah, over here on the right, we got the line of trees I used to farm. All these other structures out here are just sort of uh, test structures to sort of see how zombies path. Uh, basic idea behind this one was just uh, if I had essentially what I have there, but uh, out in the open inside of uh, on the side of a mountain. Just curious, like if they pathfind around the outside of the structure, all right, which they do. Uh, out here, I was just testing uh, the uh, the plate based structure. So each of these layers is just made out of uh, armored plates which are incredibly thin, stacked on top of each other for supports. And uh, the bars you can just shoot through and I get a little hole in the center where you can throw down dynamite if you want. Uh, this little pyramid is in the center. Since zombies try to get to the, uh, the closest point, uh, since it's elevated a little bit, they'll all naturally uh, gather towards the top there. You can drop down explosives if you want, which is it's fairly fun. But uh, I prefer a nice uh, horizontal uh, view so that the tourists can do most of the work. A little wandering horde going on. And over here is uh, it's called a zombie force field, if you haven't heard of this. Basically just some uh, open arrow slots, and it sort of prevents the zombies from pathing directly towards you. They will attack the slots if they can't figure out uh, a good path, but uh, works pretty well, all in all. I prefer the slopes personally, just because they virtually will never attack them. It's just a generally simpler and more effective option. Got my nice little runway right here. Anyway, with that, I'm going to go loot the Higashi Pharmaceutical Building, which is on the opposite side of the map for me. Uh, I haven't actually been through that, so you'll get a taste of what clearing building for the first time is like for me. Yeah, it doesn't have a quest to it, as far as I'm aware. One thing I'm very impressed with about this game is uh, all the structures are built very much like dungeons, where there's a, ma a natural path and hidden little side loot throughout. I already did a uh, recording session going through uh, Dishong Tower, which is the tallest structure. Unfortunately, the uh, audio didn't record properly. That one took me about an hour. The Gashi uh, Pharmaceutical should take a little less time. It'll take uh, about 10 minutes for me to get there, but uh, you'll all see me in the next episode. Anyway, thank you for watching. Hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.